Hi, I am going to teach you how to love physics, and that happens when you learn how to understand physics. Today I am going to reveal one of the most basic problem-solving strategies for physics problems. It has a colloquial name as plug and chug. To most physicists and experienced physics students, this may almost seem like a trivial discussion, but I've seen many beginning physics students struggle to gain this revelation, so I don't think it is something trivial to talk about. And once you master this skill, you will be one more step further along in mastering physics. Physics is pretty much just a bunch of word problems, so you need to develop the ability to interpret the verbal problem statements into mathematics. The simplest word problem you will encounter is one in which all the quantities of one specific applicable equation are mentioned. In such a case, all you have to do is identify the equation plug in the quantities, and chug out the answer. This name is almost used derisively, as in, that's just a plug and chug question. But you probably have already seen, started working on physics homework, and have been running into problems that seem completely confusing and hopeless. Don't worry, you just have to know how to look at these problems. Here's an example that uses the concepts introduced in the last video, the concepts of position, velocity, and acceleration. Here I give a graph of a position of a particle as a function of time. What is the average velocity from t equals 2 to t equals 12 seconds? This question asks for average velocity over an interval. So to answer the question, we need to somehow use the information given from the graph to solve for the average velocity over the interval asked for. Well, we have an equation that gives average velocity over an interval. It is change of position divided by change of time. See, I just picked up the equation that included the desired quantity, average velocity. So now that we have our equation, we can plug in the other quantities into the equation. The other quantities are change of position and change of time. Change of position is simply final position minus initial position. In this case, we are still only dealing with one dimension. So all we have to do is apply the sign convention and add accordingly. Once again, change is final minus initial. So the change of position is the final position, negative 2 meters, minus the initial position, positive 3 meters, equal to negative 5 meters. The change in time is simply the final time, t equals 12 seconds, minus the initial time, t equals 2 seconds. So the average velocity is simply negative 5 divided by 10 equal to negative 1 half meters per second. This is the average velocity only for the interval from 12 to 2 seconds. Notice that any other interval will have very different average velocities. Also notice what I did for this question. I was asked for a quantity, average velocity, over an interval. So I looked for an equation that included the quantity somewhere in it. I then plugged in all the other information given in the problem into the equation and chugged out the answer. So don't ever look at a problem in a panic. Just carefully note what it is you're being asked for and look for an applicable equation that includes the quantity. Then plug in the rest of the given information into that equation. In this problem, I just told you right out what the mathematical quantity data was, but normally you're going to have word problems and have to interpret that. But we'll work on th that skill later. So do believe me, physics problems will get much more difficult than this simple plug and chug. But you have to at least master this before you'll be able to tackle those more difficult problems. Now for a second question. Again, what is the instantaneous velocity at t equals 16 seconds? We want the velocity at the instant where t equals 16 seconds. So once again, we look for an equation that gives velocity. Now we have two equations that give velocity. We have velocity defined as change of position over an interval divided by change of in time over that interval. And we also have an equation that says velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So both equations give velocity. Which one should we choose? This is the important part of the whole plug and chug thing. You can't just go at it and grab any old equation throw in the values, and end up with the correct answer. You have to understand the equation that you're plugging into, and you have to verify whether or not it applies to your specific situation. 
This may seem trivial for this problem, but later in physics, your professor is going to derive billions upon billions of equations, all according to different approximations, different situations, and often they will use the same names and same letters for radically different quantities. So you never want to simply grab an equation that has the variable you're looking for. You've got to make sure the equation applies to the situation within your problem. Careless action on this end leads to many avoidable mistakes. So back to the question at hand. Which equation for velocity do we use? We, well, we are asked to obtain the instantaneous velocity at one specific moment in time. The first equation does not give us the velocity at one particular moment in time, but that is precisely what the second equation gives. So using the second equation, we need to find the derivative of position with respect to time and you evaluate it at t equals 16 seconds. The relation of position as a function of time is a piecewise function. And at t equals 16 seconds, the equation for p of t is t minus 14 squared minus 2. The derivative with respect to time is 2 times the quantity t minus 14. Evaluated at t equals 16 gives 4 meters per second. Notice that this is a positive 4 meters per second, so that also reveals the direction, whatever we chose the positive direction to be. And this is your first hurdle on your way to successfully approaching physics problems. I didn't give you a method that allows you just to blindly solve problems without thinking and without struggle. But I'm showing you a way to organize your thinking approach. To organize the way you think about these problems that allows you to complete some of the simpler physics problems. Remember, you cannot blindly plug and chug. You must carefully make sure you are using an applicable equation and that the variables you are substituting correspond to those defined in the equation. As you advance through your first physics course, you will see many of the same letters used over and over again for completely different variables, so remember to stay on your guard. Professors have no dearth of creativity in crafting sadistic little mind warpers for us intermention, so do realize that less and less of the questions as you move on in your physics career will be approachable by this simple plug and chug methodology. But you will never be able to approach those more difficult equations, problems, if you don't first acquire the skill to methodically plug and chug when it's appropriate. Well, if you have any questions, please leave them down below.